If you found yourself wishing there was a way to time block within Notion, don't worry, I've got you. Today, we are going to build a time blocking schedule together. But as a disclaimer, I personally don't think that time blocking is the answer to all of our productivity issues. So I'm also sharing how I personally use time blocking in my weekly routine and ways that it can help you too. Before we get started today, I want to remind you guys that this is the last weekend for you to grab any of my Notion templates at their current price points. Plus, if you buy the Life Planner tomorrow, November 25th, I'm gifting you a free 30 minute one-on-one -on -one call with me. We can talk about Notion, template personalizations, or even just how to systemize your life for more time freedom. I will leave more information down in the description for you. Also, if it sounds like I am on an ocean front today, sadly, I am not. It is just very windy outside, so if you hear that, I'm sorry. <laughs> now let's talk about time blocking. Time blocking is a pretty well-known productivity strategy that many people use to stay on top of their tasks each day. But if you're new to the idea of time blocking, time blocking is a time management strategy. Essentially, you're blocking off certain times of your day for specific activities. Personally, I used to use time blocking pretty religiously. Before I created my own system within Notion, I used to use Google Calendar to time block everything that I needed to get done each week. Inside each of those time blocks I would create I would take all the tasks that I put into Notion and then make them tasks in Google Calendar as well. That way I could put them inside a specific time block and then be able to see what needed to be done within that time period. Now, while that sounds pretty great and conceptually it still sounds great to me, I stopped doing that completely. I did not want to have to keep taking my tasks from Notion and putting them into Google Calendar every single week. You know I love automations and taking all of the work out of your productivity systems. So so after a few months of doing this, it was a pretty easy decision to stop for me. <laughs> Recently, I have been struggling a little bit with my time management and I have caught myself thinking, oh, if I could just get back to where I had my time blocks and I could add all my tasks to those time blocks, I'd be golden. But the truth is, even when I was using that system of putting everything into Google Calendar, I was not following it perfectly at all. And that made me realize that it had nothing to do with the time blocking and everything to do with how I was assigning myself tasks. So I made some tweaks to my current system and I'm happy to say that I am the most productive I have been in quite a while. If you're curious what those little tweaks are, keep watching because I'll be sharing them very shortly. Now, the biggest reason I don't really like time blocking is because it does not account for how you might feel during that day or just random things that might pop up during the day. You could have a perfectly planned out schedule to make sure that you got everything done, but if you're feeling tired that day or you're having trouble focusing, it can be hard hard to adjust your day because all of your time was already accounted for. I also found that if I started to get behind in the tasks that I needed to get done, I would start to rush through things and try to get back on track, usually to no avail. <laughs> I have also really come to value flexibility within my day so I can just let life happen. And I don't have to be so rigid about things because when I am, I just get overwhelmed when one thing goes wrong. My inner Enneagram one is trying to let go a little bit more and this is a really important step in the process for me. So instead of creating a rigid schedule, I like to time block an ideal schedule. That way I at least have an idea of what I want each day to look like. I then use that ideal schedule as a guide when I'm planning out my week to make sure that I am including time for everything that I want to do, but also not overloading my plate. The biggest difference between an ideal time block schedule and a normal time blocking schedule is that I just don't change it for those random little things that come up from day to day because it's really just there for reference. So so let's go ahead and build one out together. If you caught my YouTube short on how to create a time blocking schedule, this may look a little bit familiar because it's the exact same process. However, I did have a few people ask me for a full version and to do it a little bit slower because I did have to cram it into a 60 second video. And of course, with the shorts format, you have a much smaller viewing screen. So hopefully this helps you guys see the process a little bit better. All right, so we are going to be working within a database for this. So the first thing we'll do is create a new database. I'm just gonna choose an inline database base for this one and I'm gonna call it my ideal schedule. I almost always hide my title so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and then I will rename this my ideal schedule there. For whatever reason I just really like to have the title up here instead of like the big title. I don't know just more aesthetic maybe. So once we've got that set up we're gonna go ahead and change the name property to be the time 
and I can change the icon here too. And then the tags that come with the database when you make a new one, we're just gonna change that to a select property. And I'm going to name it our first day of the week, which is Sunday. All right, so now I'm going to create all of the options that you're going to use for your time blocking here. This is going to be really specific to you, so whatever categories you're wanting to time block, you can add them here. I'm gonna add things like my wake time, my bedtime, lunch, dinner, breakfast, anything you can think of that you want to add. Also, instead of just adding work, I like to add shallow work and deep work. That is something that helps me delineate what types of tasks I'm going to be including during that time period. This is one of those small tweaks that I made, so I'm gonna share more about that in just a minute. I also really like to go in here and color code these things. So for my wake time and bedtime, I might make those red. For lunch, dinner, and breakfast, I might make those purple. For my workout and walk, those are personal tasks, so I might make those blue. And then for my work, deep work and shallow work, I'll go ahead and make those yellow. Once you have those all set, all we're going to do now is duplicate this property six times. Then we can go in and rename this to the other days of the week. Now we're going to go into our time section and you can add whatever types of time increments you want to this. I like to do hour long intervals, but you can do it 30 minutes if that better suits you. I usually start with 6.30 because that's the time I wake up and then I end with 10.30. All right, so now that you've got your entire time block schedule made up, all you have to do is select what you want in what time slot. So for example, I like to get up in the morning at 6.30 so I can go here and make that my wake time on every single day. Except Saturday and Sunday, I do sleep in a little bit. Then if you have whole sections that are going to take a few different hours, like from nine to 12, I like to deep work then I can just click and drag that down to fill in multiple spots at once. Then you can just continue to fill in your whole week so that it is perfectly how you want it. And then by the time you're finished, it'll look something like mine does here. This is my personal one, which is all filled in already. I did also have a few people ask what it looks like to clear my schedule so that you can make a new one. And personally, I don't do that super often because this is my ideal schedule and I don't really change it that much. However, if you do want to clear it weekly and create a new one, I suggest you do that using buttons. As you can see here, I have my clear schedule button and that is just set to clear everything out when I click on that button. If you're new to buttons, I do suggest you go check out my video on Notion buttons. I talk a lot more about how to create those there. Now for the things that I tweaked to boost my productivity. Honestly, I could probably make an entire video on each of these subjects, so I'm just going to touch on them for now and we can deep dive on them later. One of the first things I did was create a designated workspace for myself. I work from home part-time and part-time in an office, and while I don't have a ton of control over my office setting, I do have control about how I work from home. I was often working for from the couch or working from bed or from the kitchen table, wherever I felt like that day. And it was truly so hard to take myself seriously and get things done. So I got a desk and a chair and I started to create an office space at home. This has truly made a nine day difference for me in my productivity. If you find yourself having a hard time staying focused based on the environment that you're in, find little tweaks that you can make to help boost your productivity. You want to have a space that's comfortable but not distracting. Remove personal knickknacks that may be distracting you and instead surround yourself with things that are going to inspire you. You can also get your favorite pens or office supplies so that you're enjoying what you're using to work. And if you don't have a window in your office, you can get something like a happy light to bring in some light that mimics the natural light. Luckily, I do have a window in my office now where I work, but then I also have some really bright overhead lights, so I do encourage you to just brighten up your space. Secondly, I have gotten better about being realistic with the amount of things I assign myself each day. Even back when I was time blocking in Google Calendar, I used to shove way too many things into one short period of time. I have always had a problem with this. I just get really overconfident about the amount that I can do in the time that I have. <laughs> and again, as an idealist, I just assume that my day is going to go perfectly without taking into account anything that could throw the day off. So what I started doing is categorizing my tasks based on whether they were shallow work or deep work. And my general rule of thumb is to only include one to two deep work tasks a day and then three to four shallow work tasks a day depending on what I have assigned myself. That way I know I can actually get those things done. I also like just kind of leaving it open like that because then I can choose what I start on. If I want to do the deep work tasks first, I can. 
If I want to do some quick win shallow tasks, I can do those too. This also ensures that I get all of my tasks checked off by the end of the day, and that leaves me feeling really good about myself. <laughs> I'm also way more likely to actually set aside work and take time to relax in the evenings when I do that. I'm planning to do a little Notion tour very soon, so I will share more about my process then. Thirdly, I like to practice cycle syncing. Cycle syncing is getting a lot more popular these days because more people know about it, but if you don't know what it is, it is essentially where you align your lifestyle to the rhythm of your menstrual cycle. You can do this in pretty much all areas of your life, Life, but I do focus really heavily on doing it in regards to the tasks that I'm doing each day. I have directly noticed that based on where I am in my cycle, I am way more likely to actually want to do certain tasks. And by aligning those tasks with my cycle, I am way less likely to encounter any friction when trying to do them. And it makes them way more fun. Again, I could do a totally separate video on this, but until then, this is at least something to consider including in your routine. Now, just because I don't use time blocking in the more traditional sense does not mean that it can't work for you. It is so important to learn how to find a system that works for you. And that may look completely different than mine. Hopefully this gave you some ideas on how you can tweak your system and how you can also incorporate time blocking into that. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so that I know. And if you have not yet signed up for the Define Your Goals Challenge, here is your reminder to do so. This is a four week challenge that's going to help you brainstorm your goals, create an action plan for them, and actually follow through with them in the new year. Plus you'll get a free Notion template with it too. We are starting up in just a a few short weeks and I'm literally so excited about it. So go get signed up using the link in the description box and I will see you guys very soon. Bye guys.